you have decided to join us today for Let's Chat, Stories of Faith that Uplift and Inspire. I will be interviewing guests and letting them share their story. You know, there's nothing more powerful than a story. And when someone relates their own experience of how God's working in their life, the aha moments, maybe that time of salvation, maybe when God came through when there was no hope left. And that's what these stories are here to give you, to inspire you, to give you hope, to keep keeping on and let God guide you through your life. Again, I'm Delinda Lane. Thanks for joining us. And coming up next is our next guest. I have a wonderful guest, a new friend with me today, and Lisa Johns from Katy, Texas. So hi. Hi there. I'm so glad to be here. I am so glad. I'm glad you are too. I thank you so much for coming on. Tell us just a little bit about you. Who are you as a person? We'll get into some of the other stuff in a minute, but just fill us in a little bit about you. Well, I um, am a mom and a wife, and I have two wonderful children, uh, one in graduate school and one um, finishing up a degree that wants to be a youth minister. So I just enjoy being with my family. People think we're weird. We shop as a family, even to the grocery store, because we just like being together. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that. Well, and you were just telling me you're kind of in a, a little transition time right now, right? I am. I am. My daughter was home for a little while um, in between classes. She's working on a PhD and wow. she left. And my son is interning um, at a church outside of Dallas with their youth ministry. So we are empty nesters for the summer, which is the first time ever that we've not had at least one child home. So it's wow. going to be an interesting summer for us. <laughs> but now when fall comes back, will both of them be home or just one of them? Or what does that look like? The fall will be just my son. Um, he'll come back from his internship and he lives at home while he goes to college. So it'll okay. just be him. Um, but my daughter's not too far away. Um, she's in Oklahoma. So she tries to come home every couple of months just to see us and see her grandparents. Nice, nice. That is great. We've chatted before, and I'd always love our audience to know that um, I always know my guests coming on, although Lisa and I are new friends just over the last year about. We met about each other. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the blessings of technology. I mean, I would have just never have met you. I mean, you're in Katy, Texas, and I'm north of there. <laughs> so, uh, but it is so nice with technology to be able to, to do that and to connect. Um, let's talk a little bit. Tell us about your faith journey. When did When did you become a Christian? What did that look like for you? Well, I actually was brought up in a home with an atheist mother um, and uh kind of circulating door of dads, depending on who my mom was married to at the time. So it was the influence of friends in junior high and high school that led me to the Lord. And uh, really, I, I credit them to being the Jesus's feet um, in my realm at that time. Um, and so I made a profession of faith when I was a junior in high school and um just have continued to try and grow in that faith and share that faith with my family. Um, so that's where I came from. I love that. It just makes us realize that how important it is for us to share that with other people, because not everybody had that, um, well, I guess we'd call Christian upbringing, so to speak, that, right. uh, that other people can make that difference in our life. That's, that's what God wants us to do is to, to be, you know, the, the hands and feet of Jesus to the people around us, yeah. um, no matter who they are. So I credit the families that my friends grew up in because they did grow up with faith and, um, you know, and those are the people that taught them how to share that faith and, and how to live that faith out. Right, right. And so now you are doing the same thing. You know, I am. I am. One of the things you and I talked about, um, I guess one of the first couple of times we talked is that, you know, my daughter is going to 
is the first girl in three generations of my family that I know of that has a positive, encouraging relationship with her father. Um, and that, you know, that is a legacy that we are giving to our kids that is not something that my mom, my grandmother, or I, or I even experienced um, growing up. So she has a dad that, you know, walks into the room and says, hey, beautiful to her every time he sees her. Uh, that's not anything I ever experienced mm -hmm. or that my mom experienced. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a credit to the Lord and his his shift in our in our family and to get away from, you know, those familial curses that really were a part of our family um, until he brought me to faith and brought me to a man of faith. Absolutely. And that is so powerful because it is hard to break those strongholds, those, you know, like mm -hmm. you say, the, the generations of that, and you are seeing this first so now the generations to come are, you know, have so much hope uh, in place because of that. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. I just can't wait to see what God does with my children because it's, you know, a total different shift. I tell people sometimes it sounds funny, but I'm, I'm jealous of my own daughter, you know, because she had the Christian upbringing and had the consistent dad. And um, so it's been, it's been great to see that it's not been easy, you know, I mean, we, my husband, and I come from the opposite ends of the spectrum. I was brought up atheist. He's a uh, only child with parents who've been married almost 60 years and wow. been at the same church since he was two. And, you know, so bringing those two things together has been a challenge at times, but, uh, but we've always said, you know, as long as, as long as God is in the center of us and we keep communicating, we'll be okay. And that's kind of our mantra. Absolutely. And just how how wonderful it is that you've been able to together set that example for your kids to really know what that's like. Because there's so many in, in our country, in our society now, that's a, a very rare thing. You know, the, the, the parents are there and living that out. And of course, he got it from his family. So he knew what that looked like. My dad was an alcoholic. And so we had that kind of thing going on in our family and his dad before him and his dad before him. Um, but it's when I married Bill, um, I just, uh, as my kids were growing up, I just would say to him, you were just such a great dad. He said, well, of, of course. I mean, you know, it's like to him, it was like a no big How deal. How would I be any different? Yeah. Right. That's the way it's supposed to be. And I I know, but it isn't always that way. You know, right. and he really has, because he had very strong family. Same thing. Uh, where they were and his dad was involved in every part of his life growing up with his sports and everything. So it's, I've been in awe all these years watching him as a dad. He says, he says, I'm just showing our kids what it's like, you know, showing my son how to be a father. And he really is. And my son is a great dad. It's like, you know, thank you, Jesus, for that. Cause exactly. that yeah. is him. That is the Lord all the way. So all the way. Yeah. Yeah, and grateful that we have men in our lives who are willing to submit to that, because so many men are not. Um, you know, even if they even if they have an idea of what faith looks like, they're not willing to submit to, you know, the the idea of being the leader in the household and uh, and setting that spiritual example. Uh huh. Very true. Very true. Well, tell me, tell us about you know one of the things that. As I talk to people about the show, is that I love the aha moments. I love finding the stories of how God's worked in your life. So, do you have a few stories or something you'd like to share about God's faithfulness in your life? Well, it's funny you should say that because I, um, you know, here another God thing. I was meeting with my mentor on Tuesday, and we were talking about the fact that, you know, I feel a lot of guilt because we were not in a financial position to pay for my daughter to go to college or for my son for that matter. And so my daughter has some, some college debt. And my mentor looked at me and she said, but God did take care of that, not in the way that you would have wanted to, but she, she still got into college. She still went. And because of where he has positioned us now, we are able to make those payments on her loan for her. So it's not the way that I would have planned it and 
but but she pointed out to me that God has been in that the whole time. And it was just a revelation for me that, you know, he did provide and he is providing. It's just my perspective has to be different. And I have to remember that, you know, as we move forward, God is still with us um, in all of those things. And so for me, it's, it's, I don't need to feel guilty about what, what didn't happen because God took care of us being able to do it in a different way. You know, it just wasn't the traditional way, the way that the world would say that it should have happened. Um, but he is, he is still providing and he will continue to provide. So that's, that's was a great revelation for me, um, you know, to help me remember to not, that I don't have to carry that guilt. Um, that, that God was in control of all of that all along. If I had just let go of <laughs> me wanting to be in control, which is, you know, the real struggle most of the time. <laughs> yeah, we kind of want to do that, right? And our perspective is so limited, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like when we can begin to let go and really look at things you know, God's got the overall view. He knows all of those things. I love the example um, when people talk about that our life is like a tapestry and all we see is all the knots and the things that aren't coming together. And God's right. looking from the top at this beautiful life that he's created for us and planned for us, but we just can't see the top of that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, and it's not all, it's not ever just about us. Because Absolutely. at that time, it was about my daughter trusting that God had a place for her at school. And that, I mean, because she said all along, mom, this is where I'm supposed to be. She wasn't there two weeks. And she said, I've found my people. And she grew spiritually. She grew, you know, academically because of where she went. And her attitude the whole time was, God put me here. God will take care of the debt. You know, so it wasn't just about me. Right. wanting to be in control of it. It was about her also needing to learn to lean on God and, and to lean on the Lord and know that things were going to be okay. And that this was an okay thing for her to do. Um, so it's, it, it sometimes helps us too to, to look around us and say, okay, who is God trying to teach through this? Not, and not just me, because it's not always just about me. Right. Right. I love that. I think that's very true for us to all really can learn from that because sometimes how we see it might actually jeopardize somebody else from getting the blessing. Exactly. You know, yeah. and so like, okay, Lord, I'm just going to let it go. And, right. and having the faith of knowing that confidence of knowing that he does have that. He's got our back. He's right. got it. He's got this, you know, Right. right. and uh, yeah. we tend to always want to take it back. I don't know what that mm -hmm. is. Well, and it's funny because we can see it retrospectively. And I'm, I'm hoping that I will someday, you know, this side of heaven, get to the point where I see it real time, you know, instead of in, in real time saying, God's got this, it's going to be okay, you know, move, instead of looking back and saying, oh, yeah, now I see how God fixed that. And that's part of our growth, our own, each one of our right. journeys on how we see that. And sometimes it's more clear than others. Sometimes we catch it faster. You know, yeah. I think my goal is to catch it faster so that, like you say, getting more close to real time, you know, right. would be nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that is being grounded in the word, you know, making sure that we are grounded in what God's promises are so that when those struggles come up, that we can say, you know, I have an answer for that in scripture. God has shown me, you know, even just looking at who Jesus was when he lived on this earth. If if God if God's treating me the way Jesus treated all of those people that we know that he was with, then everything's going to be okay, you know, because right. Jesus was about meeting people where they were and providing for the things that they needed at the time. Um, and so that is another lesson that I think I've been working on over the last couple of years is to not just, not just read scripture because I need to read scripture, but read scripture so that I'm grounded in that and tied to those promises so that when things come up, I can say, I know God's got this because I saw how he, 
you know, help David or help Daniel or whoever it is. Right, right. And that I think uh, it's a very good point that just being uh, being in the word and really uh, knowing what it says um, and how it applies to our life, you know, just taking it that next step, you know, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in this being involved in some Bible studies where you can just get dig into it a little bit more and just mm -hmm. see what is God trying to say. And the different times of our lives, I mean, our, our spirit is more open to certain things and God teaches us, you know, it's one of those things where we talk about, you know, you can read the same scripture, you know, a hundred right. times and all this, all of a sudden you have an aha moment, like, Oh, has it been there all this time? Yeah. Those four words I've been reading every year for the last 30 years of my life now mean something different, but you're right. That's because we're in a different place. And yeah. I mean, that's why the, the Bible is a book that will never go out of style. Right, right. That living, it really is the living, the living word. Yeah, well, uh, do you have some other examples of things or how, how about in your business? How do you see your faith working in your business? And I, I love the name of your business, Full of Grace Bookkeeping. Tell us about that. Thank you. I was you know, it's funny, it never occurred to me to, um, I, I think I've always compartmentalized work and um, and business. And I was talking to somebody, I said, you know, I'm really trying to figure out the name of my business. And she knew me as a person of faith. And so she just put the words out there. She said, what about full of grace? And I'm like, oh, I love that. Yeah. And, and it's so cool to me that that full of grace um ties to bookkeeping because the people that I work with need a lot of grace in their books. They need a lot of grace in their lack of understanding of what their numbers mean to them. And so if I can come to them with a, you know, a non account, I'm not an accountant, but a non technical, you know, um, verbiage and be able to say to them things um, that are not judgmental and that are not critical of, you know, the decisions that they've made, um, but provide that grace to them in their understanding um, of what their books mean and how they can make better decisions for their businesses, understanding those numbers. Hmm. Uh, and, and I think that comes directly from the name people expect that when you have full of grace in your name they expect that you're not gonna you know that, that you're not gonna judge them for for the lack of organization of their books per se yeah i love that because all of us want grace in our life right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by god's grace that we are here by his grace that we do have a life and we have hope hope for now and hope for the future. So what a beautiful day. And how fun that a friend of yours thought of that for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, it's one of those things. I, I, I'm such not a word person, you know, so I'm a numbers person. And so I was like, I don't know what to call it. And she was like, well, I know you and I know, you know, what your values are. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's part of what I love about having my own business is that you know, my values can be very clear and upfront with everybody I work with. Um, and, and I work with them, not for them. You know, I'm helping them build their businesses, um, but not an employee, um, somebody that's coming alongside to offer guidance and support um, as they work through and build their businesses. I love that. So when did you, tell us about how you got started got started so um when my kids were growing up i worked within the school system because i really was committed to staying as close to my kids as possible um because it was not an example i had growing up so i worked um in the elementary school and then within the school system while they were in school and i really um i wanted to have some flexibility as they moved away from that kind of set schedule um, to be able to be there when I, when they needed me, um, and not to have to ask for, you know, worry about how many days of PTO do I have and can I go help my daughter move? And, um, so I started thinking about opening my own business and my sister had gone through, uh, a virtual expert training program, um, 
that I saw her be successful with. Um, and so I did the same training program that she did. Um, and really just, you know, the training program was about how do you create a business online? Um, and that's where all of those skills came from. So about three years ago, I quit my full-time job and um, people kept coming up to me. Oh, you're retiring. Oh, no, no, not retiring. I'm quitting my job <laughs> to open my own business. So, um, and it's just been fun ever since. I mean, I set my own schedule and when my daughter needed to move apartments, you know, she called me on a Sunday and said, mom, I got to do something different. And I said, okay, I'll bring my laptop. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, and that's, that's what I felt like I needed at this stage was to be able to do what I need to do. And not just for my kids, but, you know, my husband and I have gone on more little short-term vacations because I don't have to worry about taking time off, um, and punching a clock. And that certainly is one of the biggest advantages of, of having your own business, being an entrepreneur is you get to pick your time of when you want to work. You can be flexible with family things that happen, whether that's vacations or helping kids move, as well as having um, those choices. Like you say, having your business full of grace. You can run your business that, that's authentic to you and who you are and your own integrity and, and your character. So that's nice. a big deal. You don't have to answer to somebody else as to why you're going to treat somebody with grace, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and God's blessed it. Um, and, you know, it's paying for itself. And, and like I said, paying for my daughter's school loans now. So um, it's, it's providing what, what we need to provide. And I'm not that kind of person that is ever probably going to, I'm sure like you retire. I mean, I'm not going to reach 60 and go, Oh, I'm done. I'm just going to go sit on the couch and eat bonbons is not going to happen. Happen. Yeah. Um, my husband on the other yeah my husband on the other hand would love to just go sit on the couch and read comic books all day um, <laughs> so you know that his goal is for is to be able to retire but I probably never will because I always I want those challenges I want those um, opportunities to meet new people and to um, to tackle new things and so I probably will never retire but I have the I have the flexibility now to make that work with whatever kind of life we choose to have after he's re after he retires. Right. And I think personally, I think the word retire is such a misnomer anyway. I don't think it even relates to our society at all. I mean, people don't in, in today's world, people don't work for 50 years with a company and retire and sit on the front porch. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that, that vision that we had growing up, right. Because people now, they change businesses several times through the years because our life is expanding. And that's part of it, I think. As mm -hmm. well as, you know, we just we just need those seasonal changes. You know, yeah. like, what do we want to do differently than we've done in the past? So, and, you know, why would God have us living another 20 years if we weren't supposed to do something to be productive yeah. and to grow ourselves and grow in the kingdom and what does he have for us? What's his calling mm -hmm. on our life at this point? So until we're dead, I think we have work to do. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Absolutely agreed. Yeah. Either in the family or outside of the family, there is right. work to do. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, any other like a uh, story or aha moment or something you'd like to share with us? I think I can't think of one, Delinda. That's okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure you didn't have something you were like really wanting to tell us. I want to make sure I gave you a chance to share whatever that was. Yeah, no, no. The story with my mentor and, and really understanding how God provided for Ashley's college is it's been a real eye opener for me. And, and, you know, I, I am starting to look at lots of things where I have chosen to carry guilt because I didn't think I did them the right way. I've chosen to start looking at those things differently now with the reminder that God was in all of that all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, that guilt is, is really something that Satan wants me to hold on to um, that I, I need to let go of. And so 
that that was the biggest eye opener for me this week. Um, and I love that it happened this week, right before I got a chance to talk to you. So I know well, that's pretty perfect. Gosh, what a coincidence! Ha ha ha. I know. <laughs> ha ha ha. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, there's just not. There's just not. Um, and I, I just think it is just always these reminders. That's why it's so important for us to share these things with each other, yeah. because each of us, you know, like what you talked about, somebody else may be going through that same thing or mm -hmm. whatever, and and feeling that. Because guilt is, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's a it's a product of the enemy because yeah. guilt is like a cancer and it eats away at you and it keeps you from becoming all that God has for you. So yeah. as long as we're feeling guilty, we're not we're not really stepping into his grace. I mean, we're really not. And when we can see that. So sometimes it helps to hear somebody else talk about that. It's like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that is what we're supposed to do, share those things together. Well, I am just so thrilled that you joined me today. I'm so glad that Thank we connected. Thank you so much for the privilege. Yeah. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you for tuning in. And um, in case you don't really know what Lisa and I are talking about, maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're just not sure. Right after this, if you choose to hang on, I do just a little short two minute where I just tell you a little bit about what it means to be a Christian. If you want to check that out, I encourage you to do so. If not, just turn it off and you're fine, but it's there if you need or want it. So God bless you. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us and everybody go out and make it a fabulous week. God Bye bless now. you. Thank you, Delinda. Bye. Hi there. Thank you so much for watching or listening to our Let's Chat podcast. I hope that it has ministered to you. I hope you feel uplifted and encouraged after watching the show. But it occurred to me that maybe you might not know what we're talking about. Maybe you're not a believer. Maybe you're not a Christian and you don't really understand what we're talking about when we talk about God being with you holding your hand, having your back, walking this life with you. So I just wanted to give this little message to you and let you know that Jesus loves you absolutely 100% unconditionally. That is great news, right? John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, that means you, whosoever believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. And you can put your name in that and just know that for God so loved you that he gave his son so that you can have eternal life. So you can have a life knowing that you're not alone, that you're not by yourself and that there's a God who loves you unconditionally. That's the biggest message of being a Christian. That's what believing is all about. That's that faith of having someone, having the God Almighty holding your hand as you walk through life. If you have any questions about that, I would love to chat with you. You can get a hold of me. My information is right here on the page. Keep in mind about this. God created the world for us, for all of humans. He made it beautiful and perfect. We all stumbled Adam and Eve were disobedient in the garden. You know that story, I'm sure. But God knew that he would need to send his son to die on the cross and rise again. And if you believe that, maybe you've never made a profession of faith. Maybe you've never just said, Lord, come into my heart. That's all it takes. It's just a decision. The best decision you could ever make, I might add. But when you make a decision for Jesus, it's all about just saying, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot handle all this on my own. I need you. Come into my heart and let me walk this journey with you. So that's it. Just say yes. Say yes to Jesus. Say any prayer you want that just acknowledges that you're a sinner and you need help and you want him to live in your heart. It's that easy. So again, let me know if you need any help, if you have any questions, because I would love to be here to walk this journey with you. Take care, my sweet friends, and believe that God loves you. Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God.
my soul.